I'm Heather from Going Batty, and today I am prepping for Thanksgiving tomorrow. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I'm doing. But right now, what I'm going to be making is I'm going to be making French bread to use for our stuffing, and I'm going to be using the Instant Pot to do it. So one of the things that I do to prep for Thanksgiving is I actually print out all of my recipes so that way, um, because I have them on an app on my phone, and that way um, I can give other people other jobs to do. <laughs> so, it's so like if I'm doing the turkey, then somebody else can be mixing the stuff for the green bean casserole or something like that. So, but this one here, if, and now I know I said I'm making French bread, but this is my husband's favorite stuffing recipe. And I have the French bread recipe on the back of it because it's one of the few times that like I'll actually make the bread for the stuffing. Now you can buy it if you want to buy it. That's totally fine. But I'm just going to show you how to make French bread and proof it in your Instant Pot. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to proof our yeast. And so we're going to put it with the sugar. Um, in a smaller bowl with a little bit of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out. So we're doing um, <clears throat> one and a half tablespoons of your yeast. So there's one and a half. And the yeast that I have open, I keep it in a jar that can seal and then I keep it in the freezer. It just, it, it tends to last longer. The, the yeast still stays good. And then we're going to put in <clears throat> one and a half tablespoons of sugar. So there's one, and then here's my half. And then to this, we're gonna mix in <clears throat> Um, a half a cup of warm water. So I'm pouring in my half a cup of warm water and then I'm just going to whisk it up and you'll know if your yeast is good it'll start to get kind of frothy and foamy looking so we're just going to let that sit while we measure the rest of our ingredients. We are now going to measure in our six cups of flour And I do the kind of scoop level method. So that's one, six. <clears throat> now we're gonna do two and a quarter teaspoons of salt. And then we're just gonna whisk this together. Now, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna add our dry, our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients. And you can do this if you have a mixer with a dough hook on it, you can totally do that. Um, my mixer is broken right now, so um, I'm going to be kneading this by hand. I have the rest of my warm water here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my two tablespoons of oil to that. So there's one, two, and then I will show you what your yeast should look like once it's proofed and uh, you know that it's alive. So if you can see, let's see if I can angle this right, down in there. It's like super foamy looking. That's what your, your yeast should look like. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour our water and oil mixture in here. And then we're going to pour, let me get a spatula real quick, our yeast mixture in there. And you wanna get all of that out of there. And I'm going to start, like I said, now you can do this with a mixer if you have a dough hook attachment, but um, I don't have that. So we're going to start by mixing it with a wooden spoon which is what I prefer. I prefer ones like this that are kind of rounded too because with this kind of bowl, 
um, it gets into the corners real well. So we're just gonna kind of start folding everything in until it starts to get wet and it'll get kind of shaggy looking. So that's what I mean when I say it gets shaggy looking. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to my hand and I'm gonna start kneading it in the bowl to get all of the flour incorporated. And then I'll turn it out onto a floured work surface. All right, so if you look at that, it's come into like a, a ball form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a, like I said, the floured work surface and I'm gonna knead it for five to eight minutes. All right, so you wanna put enough flour on your area so that it doesn't stick, but you don't want so much that it changes the consistency of the dough. So if you've noticed, I've scooted out some of the flour, so that way if I need more, I can always pull it in. But when you need bread, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it, you're gonna fold it over itself, and you're gonna push like that. And then you're gonna keep doing that, turning your bread as you go. And if you see that it's starting to stick a little bit, like mine is here, you just bring a little more flour into it, and you keep kneading it. And you're gonna knead it until it's smooth and it springs back, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I've kneaded it, it's smooth. When you push on it, see how it kind of springs back just a little bit? You still have the indent of your finger, but it wants to spring back on you. So that that is done, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this proof in our Instant Pot. One more thing I'm gonna do before I proof it is I'm gonna actually kind of pull it into a ball shape and kind of move it around until it comes. It, it, you, we're tightening the bottom of it up here, just kind of moving it like this in a circle. So, and I'll show you, see how that bottom is there? That's what you're looking for. Just kind of tightening it up a little bit. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our dough that's in our greased insert, we're gonna put it in here, and we're gonna set it to the yogurt setting and make sure it's on normal. Now you're gonna let this raise our proof in here for 40 minutes, and I have found that my stock pot lids fit perfectly on top of that. So you're gonna cover that, and every 10 minutes you're gonna come in and kind of punch it down, and you're gonna do that for 40 minutes. All right, our timer went off, so we're going to go ahead and kind of punch this down. And I'm gonna use kind of my wooden spoon to do it. We're just gonna kind of move it around. Just like that. And push into it a little bit. So we're gonna, and then we're going to put the lid back on it. All righty, our Bread dough has, I've done the 40 minutes of raising. Now, I, I may have, it may have been it's slightly confusing. What you're gonna do is every 10 minutes, so three times you're gonna punch this down and then you're gonna continue to let it raise, but you're gonna do it in 10 minute intervals where you push, push it down with the, the spoon like I showed you. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to turn our pot off and we're just gonna dump this onto a floured surface. We're going to take this and you want it on like on a floured surface that you dump it out on and you're going to cut it kind of look at what is half and you're going to cut it in half because you're going to get two loaves of bread out of this just like that and then i'm going to set this one kind of over here and i'm going to grab my rolling pin and what we're going to do is we're going to Roll this out into like a rectangle, and then we're going to roll it up into a loaf of bread. So let's set this guy there. And make sure your surface is lightly floured so that it doesn't stick. And we're just gonna roll it. Now that we've got it about the width that we want our loaf of bread to be, 
but we're gonna start doing, <clears throat> we're, just gonna, we're gonna start rolling it up. Just like this. And you want it kind of tight. And then you're gonna take the edges here and you're gonna pinch them so it seals up the bread. And then you're gonna take the ends and you're gonna kind of fold them over like this and seal those up too. And then we are going to take our baking sheet here that we've lined with parchment. And we're going to flip that over so that the seam side is down. And you're gonna put it on your baking pan, just like that. And then you'll make sure that it's shaped correctly. Now my baking pan is kind of, my cookie sheet here is kind of a longer one. So you may only be able to get one of these on a regular cookie sheet and you may have to put it diagonal. But mine is big enough that I can put two of them on, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll this other one out and then I'll show you what your next step is gonna be. <clears throat> what we're gonna do now is we're going to score our bread, which means we're going to cut like little slices into it, but you don't wanna go all the way down. You only wanna go like about a quarter of an inch down. So I'm doing it at a slight angle just like that, and I'm doing it about an inch apart. You wanna use a really sharp knife for this, or if you have like a razor blade, you can do it with a razor blade. But my knives are pretty sharp. I don't like having dull knives. So we're gonna go ahead and score this, and then uh, we're gonna put an egg wash on it. To make an egg wash, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take an egg, you're gonna put it in your bowl, and then you're gonna put about a tablespoon of water in with it, or a splash of water, which is about a tablespoon. Just like that. And then just whisk it up real good. And then we're just going to coat the bread with the egg wash. Now, you can also at this point, if you like poppy seeds or sesame seeds or something like that on your bread, you can go ahead and put it on there. This will help it stick to the bread. Um, I'm not gonna do that just because I'm using this for the um, stuffing. <clears throat> We're just gonna put the egg wash all over it so it gets this nice kind of golden brown color on it. And then we're going to cover this with plastic wrap or a damn tea towel if you want. And we're gonna let it, um, we're gonna let it raise. There is your egg wash all over your bread. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to put this to raise in a warm place. So while your oven is heating up, you can set it on top of your oven and that's gonna be warm enough. All right, so I'm going to put my plastic wrap over this and you're gonna do it loosely. You don't want it like super tight because you want it to be able to, to, to raise. You have it double in size and that, that can depend on where you are and the humidity in your air and all sorts of stuff like that. I find for me, double in size is usually between 30 to 40 minutes. So we're gonna loosely, just see it, just loosely cover that, just like that. There we go. And we're just gonna let that raise, like I said, for 30, maybe 40 minutes. So I'll probably check it at 30, and if it needs to go more, then we'll let it go more. Hi. <laughs> we have Katie here. She's prepping appetizers. We've got a lot of prepping going on here, prep work for, and then we've got apples for pie, and we've got Max over here, who's gonna be making puppy chow. So, but Max, if recording. you didn't know, Max has his own YouTube channel now, which is what? Uh, the, that woodworking which, kid. Yeah, that's what she's, yeah. So he has where he's doing woodworking stuff. And Katie has one, which is 
Katie's hobbies. So yep. if you guys want to check those out, um, we'll leave links down below to their YouTube channels. So what Katie's making right now is Aunt Nicole's famous uh, pinwheels. Yep. So that's what she's got the mixer going and all that kind of stuff. So these are these are one of our absolute favorites. And in our family, like once you're known for making something, you make it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And this is one of those Chris things. Chris is never going to get out of making pretzels ever again. Yeah, at Christmas time, my brother it makes pretzels. <laughs> yep. Um, it has actually only been about 25 minutes. So um, my, my kitchen's kind of hot today because of all of the cooking that we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the plastic wrap. And we're going to put this in the oven. So I believe I forgot to tell you, our, the oven is set at 425. So you're gonna bake it at 425 for 10 minutes. When you lower the temperature, you're gonna lower it to 375 and you're gonna bake it for 20 minutes more. Our bread is done baking. So we're gonna pull it out of the oven. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty bread. All right, so that's how you make French bread. <clears throat> and like I said, I you can eat it just like this. You can use, serve it with your pasta or whatever. Um, I'm actually gonna cube this up and I'm going to let it sit on the counter overnight and get a little stale so we can use it for stuffing tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave it in comments down below and more updates as we go. Bye.